switching gears to freelancing. So it's, it's a sizable component of the U.S. economy now. 35% of Americans are freelancing or more. And some, in some ways, freelancers are in a better shape because they don't have all their eggs in one basket. One employer can't fire them, right? If, if, assuming they have multiple clients. But at the same time, they're at risk because they don't have the same safety nets uh, of traditional employment. Uh, so how do you think about creating some kind of a safety net for these kind of workers? I know you've been a proponent of independent workers for a long time. Yeah. How you know, you- I, I go back and forth on whether or not they should be classified as employees for just that reason, you know, because effectively they are, you know, whether you're Uber and Lyft, it doesn't matter. You're just part time for both. Um, it's just the the digital version of having two jobs, you know, um, because you have to follow pretty much all their rules. But at the same time, I don't see that happening quickly, even though California is trying to change that. And so I think the first, it starts with healthcare and we really haven't gotten anything new. We need a different type of safety net. Um, And I'm not a fan of Medicare for all or single payer simply because there's no reason for you or, you know, pick somebody who's, is driving an Uber cab or Uber you know, and Lyft, um, they shouldn't be paying the same amount as I pay for my health care. So I, I really believe in means tested. And if you're below 250% of the poverty, of 250% of the federal poverty level, then your health care shouldn't be more than maybe a copay. Um, and then above that, it should be means tested to up to 10% of your income. And believe it or not, this is a study that I actually had done with the Rand Corporation. And it, get, it increases and improves the healthcare, but particularly now, I mean, going into this pandemic, we had 45, 46 million people eligible for the ACA. Now that number could be, you know, 75 million. And so nobody's talking about healthcare at all. And that's the key component for everything related to independent workers. Um, now, you know, the other thing <clears throat> going forward, as we're seeing with Instacart and others, I think it really just turns into people being able to arbitrage their time. You know, if I can, you know, if I can pay you for your time and it's cheaper than my time and it's, you know, more efficient for me to do that, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's effectively what the whole gig economy is and arbitrage on time. And so I think we're going to find new ways to do it as people aren't, you know, particularly older um, individuals aren't able to go places or concerned about going places. Here, you go do this for me. Um, You know, I think we're going to see that more and more as part of the gig economy.